Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This was sent to me, so I definitely cannot take credit for me. Asked me to make a Bible study on this, and I thought, yep, yeah, this is worthy. Um, sorry, I haven't put out anything today. I've been so busy. Uh, I uh, did my, uh, it took me half a day or more to, to file for unemployment online. I'm like, it was a lot easier back in the day when you could wait half a day in an office to fill out some papers. This online stuff was horrible. And then I had to file another half a day to fill out the job search junk. So, I mean, I've been busy probably a whole day, just, well, half a day today and half a day yesterday, or more than half a day. I, it's insane. You know, you work all your life, and then the one time you need something from the government, they make it almost impossible to get, and then they'll probably find a reason to deny me anyways. Oh, you're too white. So... All right, so enough of my ranting and raving. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Here we go. Um, Mount Moriah, most holy ground. According to many, uh, Mount Moriah was the place where Abraham was told of the Lord to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. And David bought the threshing floor from Ornan, the Jebusite, for 50 shekels of silver and built an altar. Solomon built the great temple there. It was destroyed. And then um, 70 years later, the second temple was started to be built there. So, will there be a third temple? Well, that's Bob's thought. I think so, but that'll be for the man of sin. All right, so let me continue with this Bible study. Predestinated. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8.29 Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Romans 8.30 Having predestinate, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Ephesians 1.5 In whom also we have ordained, I'm sorry, obtained, obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Ephesians 1.11. These are the four scriptures that use the word. The predestinated are the twelve tribes. That is who the whole Bible is written to and speaking to and about. That is who he called out of Egypt, his son. That is who he is talking about when he says, For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other, whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Deuteronomy 4.32 Did people, did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and live? Deuteronomy 4.33 Or hath God 
assayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation, speaking of Israel from Egypt, by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Deuteronomy 4.34 And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 4.37 For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7, 6. Bob's note here. Do you ever notice how much they hate Christians, the world, the news media? I mean, it's becoming apparent even to unbelievers. So, God hath chosen his people to be a special people above all people upon the face of the earth. Why does everybody want to come to Europe and America? Why is that? Highest standard of living in the world. Because at one time, God blessed us. Uh, that's changing now. So, let's keep reading. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Deuteronomy 7, 7. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Deuteronomy 7, 8. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, not the whole world. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Amos chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. But we know it is conditional. On obedience. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 8.20 If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1 and verse 19. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Isaiah 1.20 And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2.8, speaking of Christ. The entire chapter of Deuteronomy 28, the blessings poured out on the obedient, the curses poured out on the disobedient. I did an entire Bible study on that. And just in case you want to know, we're in the disobedient curse stage. So, so the predestinated ones, the called, the seed of Abraham, have the offer of eternal life, salvation. Jesus knocks on the door. He calls and woos. We choose to accept like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or we can choose to reject like Esau. If we are automatically saved, why does the Bible exhort us to run the race, to hang on to the end, to have power over our tongue, to seek and love our God, to seek and love our God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. If we are saved no matter what, why do we even need a Bible? When the Holy Spirit told Paul it was time to go to Jerusalem 
to face the you-know-whos, why didn't he just kill himself? He knew what his fate was going to be. If suicide is a transport ticket to Jesus, what difference does it make? Most, if not all, the martyrs could have had the option of suicide, but they didn't. Like I said, I am not the judge, but I strongly lean to the side that suicide is the killing of a human. God would not tell anyone to commit suicide. And I agree with that. Uh, the only thing I can, Bob's note here, the only thing I can think of is Samson. But I don't think the Lord was pleased, but Samson chose wrong and he paid for it. So, all right, let's continue the study. Rather, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. We are to cast our cares upon him. We are not meant to carry the weight of the world. We can't. He promises to help us and be with us. This person writes, That prison ministry I'm part of, those beautiful Christian God-fearing men, live in the next thing to hell, they get tempted to end it many times. They cry out to God in those moments and he gives them peace and the will to go on for just another minute, another hour, another day. How many people would have loved to end it rather than suffer? I've been there. You've been there. But that is not the answer. That must have been a hard conversation to have with your friend. Um... Uh, this must be some kind of conversation. I'm sorry that her mom did that. My cousin did it in around 1998. He left young children. I wish he would have turned to Jesus instead. I know he would be alive today. I agree with your statement that I question whether the person has a relationship, been truly born of the Spirit, adopted into the family of God. I've heard hundreds of testimonies over the years of people that tried and failed and decided not to. How God helped them away from harming themselves. He would never tell someone to do it. So that right there says a lot. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my beliefs about predestination and suicide. Another way I could look at it is I'm a Christian. I told my kids about Jesus. I hope that I predestinated them as a parent to also be a Christian, but they reject me and my Christianity. They had the chance to have eternal life, but they rejected it. That's how I see it. Many are called, few are chosen. Bob's note here. I could say the same thing about my family. I mean, seriously. All right, let's keep reading this. Even though Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, speaking to the apostles, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. John 15, 16. Accordingly, as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians 1, 4. You know, right there, that's Bob's note here. This is, this right here is proof of election. You know, the, the whosoever will crowd, they're the ones that run off to Haiti and get killed, roasted and eaten. But they don't believe this. Accordingly, as he, who's he? God, as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Before the world was even formed, God had chosen us that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Wow. Yes, he chose us, but we also need to choose him. It's a conscious choice. 
He chose Jacob Israel in that he planned his whole world, past, present, and future, before he even created the earth that was first empty and void. He is omniscient. He knows the end from the beginning. It's all his creation. It's his story. His story. He also know, knows who is not going to choose him, and he weeps over them. No, the truly saved won't lose their salvation because they are always about their father's business, always seeking his face, repenting and worshiping. That's the working of the Holy Spirit in a true believer's life. That's how you know a wheat from a tear. A tear is a weed. That's how you know a wheat from a tear by their fruit. Envyings murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in past time, that they which do such things shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5.21 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Bob's note here. You know why the Hebrew Roots people are always trying to get you back into the law, Sabbath keeping, and all this other junk? Because they don't have the fruit of the love, Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. They don't have this. They want you to replace the fruit of the Spirit with law written on a table of stone. I don't think so. All right, let's. Uh, Bob's note is done here. Let's continue reading this. Uh, nice study here. Suicide is murder. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. Would I tell someone who lost a loved one to suicide that I believe they aren't with Jesus? Never. But I wouldn't tell them they were either. I hope I never have to have that conversation with anyone. There is a way to lose salvation or throw it away. I, Bob's note. You don't believe it? Listen up. Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Why? Because they said Christ had an unclean spirit. And that's in Mark chapter 3, verse 28 and 29. They attributed the works of Christ to the devil. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Matthew 12, 50. That's Jesus speaking. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. And I did an entire Bible study on doing the will of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have done have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's Matthew 7, 22, 7, 23. Wherefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Matthew 7, 24. And Paul says, And that rock was 
Christ. Yeah, and you're wondering why I'm doing going to do the uh, Stone and Rock series. Don't believe it? Look at the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25. And the list goes on and on. Purchased. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as a stone till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. Exodus 15, 16. Remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt. Do you know what redeeming means? It means something that was sold that you bought back. You take a tool. You go to the pawn shop and say, hey, how much you give me for this tool? Well, this is Bob's note here. And they say, oh, I'll give you 20 bucks. All right, well, I need 20 bucks. I don't have any money right now. I'll take it. Well, you do that on a Wednesday. Friday rolls around, you get your paycheck. You run down the pawn shop after you've cashed your check, take the 20 bucks and give them another five for the 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 for the joy of being able to borrow their $20 for a couple days. And you redeem your tool back. And that's that's what redeeming means. In the Bible it was a little different, but you get the idea. Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt. Psalm 74, verse 2. And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain, which his right hand had purchased. Psalm 78, 54. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Hmm. Let's read that again. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased. Who? Who's he? Christ which he hath purchased with his own blood. Acts 20 and verse 28. When Christ was on the cross and he died, what did the Roman soldier do to make sure he was dead? He took a spear and pierced his side underneath the ribs all the way to his heart. What came out? Water and blood. which is the earnest of our inheritance unto, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1.14 Way back when Moses brought the children of Israel, the whole family of Jacob, out of Egypt, God refers to them as purchased. He already claims to have purchased this people. The descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the sons of Jacob, the twelve tribes, Israel. Then David and Psalm, Psalms prays to his God to remember the congregation he purchased of old when they came out of Egypt. The family of Jacob were 70 people who went to Egypt to meet Joseph, and almost a million came out with Moses. Psalm 78 reminds us again that his right hand purchased the children of Israel. In Acts, those same people, the children of Israel, the literal descendants, seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were purchased by his own blood. In the Ephesians, until the redemption of the purchased possession, descendants of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his possession, who Jesus came to save. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor 
that shall rule my people, Israel. Matthew 2 and verse 6. Bob's note here. Not the whole world. Not the whole world. You know, this was, this was the thing that made me realize Christianity was for real and it was our book. Once I realized the universal garbage was a lie, and especially the Antichrist being God's chosen people, I immediately came back to the Lord after having rejected him verbally in a room full of people when I was in high school, I think. But then by the time another 15, 20 years passed, thank the Lord showed me something. So let me continue reading this study. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Matthew 15, 31. Did you notice not the whole world? And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Luke 1, 16. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Luke 1, 33. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Luke 1, 54. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever, Luke 1, 55. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Luke 1, 68. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Luke 1, 69. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Luke 1, 77. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts until the day of his showing unto Israel. Luke 1 and verse 80. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Luke 2 34. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. John 1, 31. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. John 1, 49. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Acts 13, 23. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Acts 13, 24. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure, to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of the whole world? No, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Romans 4, 16. For I could wish that Myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Romans 9, 3. Who are Israelites? 
to whom pertaineth the adoption, not the Gentiles, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Romans 9, 4. Why would, Bob's note here, why would Paul be writing about Israel when he's writing to the book of the Romans in Italy, in Rome? Because some of them were Israelites. Duh. All right, let's keep reading. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Romans 10, 1. But to Israel, he said, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Romans 10, 21. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Romans 11 and verse 1. And, of course, they want you to think that the Antichrists over in the Middle East are Israel. And yet they fulfill none of the promises that God made to Israel. Rather, they fulfill the promises. Well, let's see what promises they fulfill. Oh, um, uh, Romans 11.1. 1, that was the, uh, the end of the study. Now we're going to do, I'm going to do a little commentary real quick. Now remember, God said he hated Esau. Obadiah verse, chapter 1, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, and Esau is Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Who are the heathen? Those that are not in Christ. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Is there a group of heathens that are small in number that are greatly despised? Yeah, there is, but I can't tell you who they are. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. They are very prideful people. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Oh, yeah. Who are heathens, small in number, and greatly despised? When you can figure that one out, you'll know who we are talking about. All right, that's the end of this Bible study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.